now and share my screen. Welcome everyone to the Jenkins Infrastructure Team meeting. Thanks for being here. This is being recorded. Reminder that we're governed by the Jenkins uh, Code of Conduct, so be nice to each other. Uh, topics I've got on the agenda for today include a new Jenkins infrastructure contributor, latest status on Azure storage outage, GitHub publishing of the release war files from Tim if he's available, weekly release status, LTS release prep, Windows Docker image status from Gareth, if you're okay with that, Gareth, and then JIRA migration topics, if any. Any other items that should be put on our agenda for today? All right, great, then let's go ahead. I wanted to, to briefly some cut on um, uh, GitHub releases, uh, but it needs uh, team as well. Right. So, so maybe what we should do there, Oleg. I think I hope Tim will join us. What if we were to shift this this one down later in the agenda? For now, we'll yeah, go through it and hope that Tim arrives and we can have that conversation. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Great. So first item, we've got a new Jenkins infrastructure contributor, Damien DePortal. Damien, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello there. So Damien, I'm, uh, I'm a former uh, freelancer. Uh, I worked for CloudBase in the past as training engineer as well. I'm a Jenkins user since almost a decade now. So happy to, to be part of the adventure with you folks. Super, thank you, Damien. Delighted to have you here. Damien knows lots about Terraform. He came, he's been through traffic. He's been through all sorts of interesting cloud things. Looking forward to his help. All right, next topic was the Azure storage outage status. So we are currently, we are still running the, oops, still running the uh, workaround. It works. Uh, get.jenkins.io is on the same host, the same host as uh, other services right now. That's that's not a long-term thing for us, but it's operational. Uh, the plan is to plan to switch back to the uh, the Azure file storage next week after Olivier is back from vacation and after we've finished the 2.263.1 LTS release. No answer from Microsoft yet on what went wrong and why it's now working again. So they told us they needed seven to 10 days. We're now about seven or eight days into it. So they're, I think, still within their window but it's naturally worrisome that we don't know why it's working again and leaves, leaves us nervous. Any questions there? So in principle, uh, is it possible to create automatic uh, failover infrastructure? So since we oh. have old one uh, and we have uh, the one uh, which we want to use, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, I don't know. I that's that's a very good idea. I propose let's bring that question to next week's session, or maybe we bring it mm -hmm. as as a mailing list topic because I think it's a good idea. We we know that we'd switched, and we know that the switch has been operational now for one or two weeks. So maybe we could have automatic failover if we had this problem again. Yeah. So I'm not sure whether it works if I'm in this one, but assuming that it's not. Uh, big deal to have it or maybe we should mm -hmm. because yeah until we get clarification from microsoft what exactly went wrong uh, it doesn't uh, improve trust too much with the uh, main service right right very good i think that's an excellent question anything else on the azure storage outage 
cost-wise, uh, what does the payloader infrastructure uh, cost approximately? Because my understanding is that uh, it's more expensive for us to host. I might be completely wrong. Hey, that's a good question. I thought that I thought that the that the cur that the previous way of doing it, not the workaround, was marginally more expensive because it's using um, Azure file storage. Yeah, Whereas the, the file storage plus uh, no mirrors in practice. No, we still have mirrors. On the right, but still. Yeah, and so and I don't think uh, to keep in uh, account because. I'm quite confident that we want to go beyond uh, the budget this year. I mean, the budget of uh, sponsorship by CDF. Uh, but yeah, in longer term, we need to put Right, right. It's, it's a valid point. I, I guess one question that we, we should be able to ask even is look to see what is the cost impact of the current situation. We've been this way for a week. If it has substantially reduced our costs, uh, that would be an interesting data point. Yeah, I'm not sure. I wouldn't rely on that too much because it would also mean that uh, we need to use such activity and statistics oh. to, to really estimate. Right. Because okay. Our metric would be rather cost per download or something like that. Not. Uh, um, absolute cost. Good point. Yeah, and I, I don't know, I, I don't know the bandwidth portion of that. That's a good, good, good yeah. observation. We had some Thanksgiving last week. Uh, I doubt that uh, so many people were downloading releases, especially right. in the United States. Right. Anything else on the storage outage? Okay, next topic was weekly release. Uh, 2.269 has been delivered. The uh, build completed successfully, packaged successfully, uh, and a new addition from Tim Jacome, the, the war, the deb file, the RPM file, and the MSI were uploaded to GitHub. So they are now visible there as part of the, the release, as part of the, yeah, the, the GitHub action base or the GitHub release. Basically, it uses a similar pattern as we used in other projects like plugin installation manager, the Jenkins file runner. Um, it has some advantages uh, because, firstly, it's a backup download source, so the file infrastructure goes down. It doesn't solve all cases, but at least uh, if you need to update quickly, you can use it. Um, and uh, secondly, it may also help to reduce the load of on our mirrors because we call some mirrors. Right. Yeah. And and now one of the questions that was was asked about that, I guess we'll get to that in our GitHub publishing release war files if if Tim's available. There were some questions asked um, that I think are worth discussing. Okay. Now, in terms of the that two point two sixty nine release, the change log has been merged. Is confirmed visible. I haven't yet confirmed the data dog checks are passing, but I have confirmed that. The exception test installs for Debian and Red Hat are passing. So as far as I can tell, the weekly release was successful and all parts of it ran as expected. Mm -hmm. uh, next topic was LTS release prep. And there we are tomorrow releasing the, the 2.263.1. And that will be, a, if I recall correctly, that is started interactively. So launched interactively, not on a clock. And we then watch to the, uh, the release plan to confirm that it is correct. Mm -hmm. So we and, release uh, spawned because yeah, uh, the release candidate was slightly delayed. We didn't get so much testing feedback at the moment. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about shipping uh, the release uh, anyway. I plan to test it tonight. Um, but yeah. 
It's a good question. I was a, I just assumed that we would release as scheduled tomorrow, but I didn't ask Oliver if he wanted to change the release date. I asked Oliver uh, on the mailing list, but yeah, since there was no response, uh, I think we should just assume that we release tomorrow. Okay. All right. Anyway, the process is manual, so we just need to ensure that someone uh, clicks uh, the build button. Right, right. And my assumption, given Olivier's current current status, is that he's he's on holiday, sort of. And so I assume that Mark will that I will push the uh, push the the launch button early tomorrow, my day. Yeah, it's fine. Or somebody, me or team could uh, start it earlier so that uh, by the time you wake up, uh, you have all artifacts in place before promotion. But, mm, that, yeah. that would be fine as well. If you're willing to look at the plan and be sure that it's no surprises, you or Tim would be great. Yeah, it just uh, gives us a bit more time uh, during the day. Uh, but yeah, since the US time zone shouldn't uh, be too much different. Okay, I've added it to my calendar anyway. Okay, all right. So, so Oleg, do you want me to know? You'll you'll go ahead and launch the build, build earlier in your day. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So great. I'll, I'll launch it at approximately. 9 a.m. UTC. Um, yeah, it's enough time uh, uh, for it to complete. Great, that's wonderful. The release profile is ready. Uh, Damien and I reviewed it today and merged it. And the uh, change log and upgrade guide PR is in review, but I believe is ready to merge. Uh, I would love to have, if you've got time, Oleg, one more check that I addressed all of your concerns. I marked most of them as hidden because I, I covered them. There were one or two I left visible for, for further thought from you. Well, uh, I didn't have any blocking uh, comments. Uh, there was something okay. from Daniel, uh, but yeah, we'll take a look. Great, thanks. Well, actually, uh, one of the important uh, things was to get uh, protocol removal in the upgrade guideline. And That's Daniel it. reviewed that. Daniel reviewed that and said he was okay with the way I had phrased that. Okay, that is great. It's not model removal, it's uh, removal of some protocols. Please still have SSHD. Yeah, it was this. It was you're right. It's module upgrade, which did a which deprecate which removes several SSH protocol. Well, no, it's the words were it removes an HMAC and a key exchange algorithm and key exchange algorithms. So one thing which concerns me about that is actual removal because there is a job submitted by JC about uh, converting SSHD model to a plugin. And one of consequences of that is uh, by default when running the Jenkins, it will have no SSH CLI mode. So in order to put SSH CLI mode, you will need to install a plugin unless uh, it's loaded as a detached plugin. From my understanding that uh, it would be still a detached plugin in the very beginning. But eventually, it might uh, impact uh, some use cases in configuration management tools, which try to communicate over CLI. I'm not sure whether any of them uses SSH, uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, uh, that's something we need uh, to keep on our radars uh, in the core team. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't be a problem for now. Great. Anything else on LTS release prep for tomorrow? Okay. Windows Docker image, Gareth. 
Yeah, not much to update on this since last week. Uh, um, the PRs for the Jenkins Docker builds are waiting to be merged, but I think we were going to hold off until after this LTS released had gone out. Great. Um, that's 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 about all I have to update on that one at the moment. Okay. Thank so you. Hope, uh, hopefully, hopefully later on this week. Right. Uh, next topic, we wanted to wanted to host with Tim. Tim here, Oleg. Would you like to defer this till next week? Do you want to just go ahead and make some notes on it? Uh, what are what are you what were you, is it helpful without Tim here? Or best that we wait till he's here. I guess we can continue in the mailing list. Okay. All right. So yeah, I can summarize how it works, but yeah, it's basically just. GitHub action which triggers on the release and uh, publishes uh, the release assets every time you cut uh, the release on GitHub releases. So we have a release draft which uh, prepares the change log draft. And once you cut a release using this change log draft, uh, the, another GitHub action will go and automatically find uh, uh, release dates and attach uh, them to the release. That's it. So now, did is that hinting that I made a mistake in publishing the the release? I, I went ahead and published the GitHub release today, just as a matter of systemic. Was that okay, Oleg, or should I have delayed? So when you pop the release, you need to be sure that the uh, packaging uh, stage has finished, so that you have uh, artifacts in place in Artifactory. You don't need to publish on. Well, you need publishing stage for that because it also publishes uh, uh, the installer artifacts. But once the entire pipeline is completed, then you can uh, just uh, cut uh, the release and everything uh, will happen automatically. So what it means that we still have action item uh, from the backlog, uh, uh, automatic uh, change log publishing. So right now we have tools for that, uh, but we haven't really finished that. And, and once we finish this stage, basically we will have uh, the entire pipeline in place. So to be honest, I'm not sure that we should be really using GitHub Actions to upload artifacts in the final implementation. We should rather oh. move it uh, to Jenkins uh, release infrastructure pipeline. Well, and that that makes sense to me because your note that I did assure that the packing stage patch, packaging stage had completed, but the GitHub action, if it were automated, might not be able to assure that the packaging stage is completed because uh, currently it's completely asynchronous. Right. Since our release infrastructure is behind VPN, uh, there is no practical way for GitHub actions to even access that. Yeah, in GitHub Action, we can go to Maven repo uh, and uh, we can uh, check the existence of this artifact and we could uh, publish them, but yeah. Yeah, on the other way around, if you use the, on the Jenkins side, the, Git, the old GitHub uh, command line, you can do the draft publication remotely from Jenkins, as well as uh, chaining and triggering. So you can do everything synchronously on the Jenkins part, while well, it's harder to do it on the other way around. Yeah. There is already a pipeline library which allows GitHub releases. So I'm not sure how good is it. And I have never tried it. But yeah, I think that since we have the Jenkins project, uh, our pipeline should be on Jenkins. So yeah. we should uh, migrate uh, once we have uh, implementation there. Right. Good. Thank you. Now there was some discussion about how to how to disable distribution of a release. As far as I could tell, the mailing list seemed to have been satisfied with that disable process. Any objection? Any exceptions to that, or places where people are worried? Oh, we need a way to hide a release sometime after it has been delivered. I haven't read this discussion. Okay, all right. 
Okay. 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 Damien had pointed out that there might be a concern about storage limits, but did the research and GitHub, the limits don't look like they'll affect us at all. They won't let us do more than a two gig file, not a problem, and no limit apparently on bandwidth. And as far as I can tell, even on number of files. So I think we're fine. Yeah. Now I had a question, I guess it's probably best for Tim and Oleg for you, the two of you together. Could the techniques like this be used for plugins and would it be useful? Uh, firstly, yes, it could. Um, I'm not sure whether we have any plugins using that. Uh, we have non plugin uh, delivery flows like for plugin installation, managing and regular style runner. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, uh, if we think about uh, the release process, uh, we should try to uh, at least. Uh, uh, artifacts from Jenkins pipelines. Now we have continuous uh, delivery infrastructure for some plugins. Uh, so uh, the recent job uh, by Daniel and Jason, and uh, we can uh, probably integrate it there. But if you just want to have an HPI file uh, published on uh, GitHub to change log, of course you can just follow the pattern. Thanks, okay. I had one more topic on JIRA migration that we had an issue with email notifications from the JIRA system. Tim reported it was resolved, but I've not seen indications in my experience that it's resolved. So I'm, I, are other people receiving notifications from JIRA that they might expect? I'm receiving both notifications and subscriptions. I can't you say are. I'm receiving call notifications, but uh, something is definitely working. Great, okay. You're receiving subscriptions, you said, and yeah. posts? Um, Great. Yeah, update notifications for general oh, tickets. Okay, update, all right. Because those are the things I'm not sure I'm seeing, but I may, I may just have a configuration error. Great, thank you. Any other topic? To say, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, the email configuration in Jira is quite complicated because it's also a project configuration. So unless you go and check everything, then you cannot be 100% uh, sure. Got it. Any other topics we should discuss here today? All right, I think we can call the session done then. I'll post the recording uh, about an hour, hour and a half from now. Thanks everybody. Thanks.